Welcome back to the final video in the How to Make a Maze Game tutorial series. In this final video, we just need to put in some final pieces of code to make our game work properly and add in a help menu. The bits of code we still need to add in are the ones to collect the coins and the diamonds. We also want to be able to blow up this rock by hitting the trigger. And we also need to get rid of this door once all the diamonds are collected. Okay, there's also a bit of an animation issue that we'll see up here with the explosion in a moment. Okay, so to get started, we're just going to put in the simple code first. Let's open up Object Diamond, and we're going to put in the code to make us collect diamonds and earn some points. So let's add an event, and it will be a collision with the man. So when the diamond and the man have a collision, basically you want to go to Main 1 and play a sound first of all. That's the sound of the diamond being collected. The loop will be false. Once we've collected the diamond, we also want to give ourselves a score. So let's set the score to 10 points every time we collect a diamond and make it relative so that score keeps adding on to the previous score. Last of all, we want the diamond to disappear once we collect it. So let's go back to the main one tab and hit that little recycle bin, which is destroy instance. And we'll click OK. It's as simple as that. So let's do something very similar for the bonus. We'll add in a collision event with the man. We will go down to the control tab, oh, sorry, the main one tab, no, there it is. I lost it for a moment. We're going to play a sound of the bonus being collected and the loop will be false. After that we set the score. We might get a 50 point score every time we collect a bonus, so something worth a little bit more. That keeps the player excited and interested in your game. And we'll check the relative box. Okay, we'll make it add on to the previous score. Last of all, back in the main one tab, you want to destroy that bonus coin. Okay, so that's how we collect diamonds and coins. That's an easy one. Now, one thing we want to do when we collect all the diamonds on the page, we want that to pop open our red door. If we look back at level three, we've got this red door blocking the trigger here. So to get access past that red door, we want to collect all the diamonds. So let's go to our object door. And on this one, we're going to add in a step event. Just click step. There's a series of steps that need to be performed to make this door open. Now the first thing we want to do is count the number of diamonds in a level. And when we get that count number to zero, we're going to open the door. That means once we've collected all the diamonds, that door will pop open. So what we need to do is pop on down to the control tab and select this box here with the blue ball and the one, two, three written underneath it. What we're going to count is the number of diamonds on the page and we need that count number equal to zero. That means when we've got zero diamonds on our page, we're going to perform a block of actions. And inside there we're going to play a sound. It's going to be the sound of the door opening. So open up the door. Loop will be false again. And once we've opened up that door, we're going to destroy it as well. Okay, so basically at the same time, you'll hear a sound opening up the door and it will disappear. And we will go back to the control tab and just close that block of events off. So it's a bit of a confusing one, but basically on the door, we count how many diamonds are on the page. The game maker will keep looking out at those diamonds. And as soon as we get to zero diamonds, we've collected them all. We'll hear the door open and you'll notice that the red door will just disappear. And we'll click OK on that one. Um, let's test that out now. And a quick way to test that out is by dragging level 3 up above level 1. So now in the rooms option here we've got level 3 as our first level and when we run our game pressing that green arrow at the top there you'll notice that level 3 pops up first. We don't want to test the other levels because you know they work. So let's see if we can get coins. Yep we can collect coins no worries. Looks like we can collect diamonds no worries. I'll try not to hit a ghost here. As I collect this last diamond, you'll notice that the red door just popped open down the bottom near the trigger. Now watch what happens when I hit this trigger. We're going to watch this bomb up here. We will have a bit of an issue, just watch. Okay, the trigger disappears fine, the bomb disappears fine, but our explosion animation just keeps playing over and over again. And the boulder, that rock, still sitting there, so we can't get through to the finish line. 
So let's fix up those final issues now. We'll open up Object Explosion. Basically what we want to happen when we blow up that um, wall, the first thing we want to do is make that animation disappear. So that explosion animation needs to play once and then just bugger right out of our game. So we'll go to the other option here, so the other event option, and go down to animation end. So once our animation has ended with that explosion, we'll go to main one and destroy it. And we'll just clear that explosion out of our game. And the other thing we want to do, we'll add in another event, and this time it'll be a create event. So as soon as this explosion appears on our page, that's when we press the trigger, that explosion will appear. So when that happens, we're going to destroy an object. And that object that we're going to destroy is the rock. We'll click OK. That's quite a simple one. Um, the other thing we might do when we create this explosion, actually no, we don't have to do that, we've already done that. I was going to play a sound, but that's already in there. So we'll click on OK. That's done now. So as far as I can see, our game's finished. Let's just test this final level one more time and make sure we've got this explosion working properly. So I'll have to run through here, hopefully not get hit by a ghost. Watch that red door. Disappears okay. Go down and press this trigger, keeping an eye on the bomb and the rock. Okay, they're working now as planned. We can run through, hit our finish line, and it does go back to level 1 there, but I'm going to drag level 3 here. I'm going to drag it back down to its position, so it's at the end of our game. So our room should be level 1, level 2, level 3. So they're back in order. So that's our game completely done. The only thing we need to add in now is a help menu. So in game information, you can change the background color if you want. You can choose some cool text colors, change the size a bit. Oops. We'll give it the name Advanced Maze Game. You can call your game whatever you like. And generally, you put in a few different help items here. So I'll change the color again. Oops, that's the background color. We want to change the text color. You put an overview of your game first. You'll put in the controls. And if you wanted to, you could put in things like enemies and rewards. You could talk about them as well. And just a couple of sentences underneath each of those subheadings telling me how the game works is fine. I'll just show you how that help menu works as well. So when you run your game, all you need to do is press F1 on your keyboard and you'll be able to access the help menu. So if I press F1 right now, up pops my help menu. And if I press the escape button, it will go back to my game and I can keep playing my game. Okay, so that's basically all I'm going to show you in how to make the advanced maze game. Once you do finish, I would like you to add a fourth level. Okay, and try and add some features of your own. I will give you access to some other sprites. And I want to see how creative you can get in making your own level in the game. So have fun with that. It's not too hard once you get the hang of it.